Now that 3D printing technology has advanced, we can print fast and get no vibration in our prints anymore. And finally, we can all move on. Right? Kind of. One printer on its own, maybe. But several printers side by side in a mini print farm kind of a setup, I'm not so sure. And it seems that's the case for the producers of these 3D printers as well, because they make these for this printer, and they make these for this printer. So in this video, we'll take it to the extreme and add external vibrations to the printer while it's printing so we can see just how good they are. So stick around. These Core XY printers have tech which allows them to compensate for vibrations we'd normally see during printing while changing directions rapidly. That allows us to get the speeds up high and still have good results. Actually, very good results. But what about vibrations outside of the printer? The printer doesn't have any way of compensating for these, right? Maybe this is something like jumping on a trampoline. If it's just you, mostly no problems, you know what's going to happen. But when you add another person, forget it, someone's going down and it's hard to know who it's going to be. Here's a test model printed normally. This is printed with PETG in VOS mode, so it isn't going to be crazy fast. And I don't think the shape is too critical on these tests either. If we're going to see vibrations, we should see them on the X and Y axis as well. And now let's see what happens when we have both printers going at the same time. This is often how I have the printer set up, but I'd never use them both simultaneously. So it should be a good test to see if two printers on one bench is a good idea. I'll add some wine glasses with a bit of water as well to help show the vibrations a little bit better. I noticed that the printer didn't shake violently enough to register on our stupidometer. So I'll crank up the print speed from 250 millimeters per second to about 400 and maybe that'll help. I've adjusted the water to a nice bright pink color as well to see if it shows the vibration a bit more clearly. This is just standard PLA and even though I have the nozzle temp up at 300 C, it isn't enough. What we need is some high speed PLA. So I've loaded in some Creality Hyper PLA and we'll rerun the same test again. This time at 300 C, the filament is melting fine and the test turned out to be a success. Now if you didn't think there was a difference between standard and high speed PLA, there is. It makes a big difference when printing at high speeds like this. And now for the test, which may take the top spot for worst idea. We need to get this K1 printer up on top of the Bamboo X1C and then we'll perform the same test again. But of course, instead of beside, it's going to be up above and hopefully something interesting happens on this one. So while that test is running, I want to say thanks for all of the support on Patreon, which helps to make these videos possible. Any of my designs shown in my videos will be available to my patrons for free. And if you want to help out as well, check it out in the link below. Well, uh, even though I'm getting the vibration, the test at the top failed to print. I had been manually setting the temperature higher to 300 C and I didn't get there in time. So rinse and repeat. This time I'll make sure I set the temperature properly. Now originally I wanted to print on my washing machine to get the vibration, but that would have meant I needed to do the laundry. So this was the runner up. I chose to print infill to create the vibrations because it usually is printed at high speed. Most types of infill also cross over areas that they've already printed, which you can hear during the print and that should also add some vibration. And there aren't usually too many retractions either. Let's see how each of the tests turn out. So at first glance, the samples don't look too much different. But if we take a closer look and use that shine to help us a little bit, we can see that the first sample had just a few repeating vibrations. As we introduced the K1 printing infill at about 250 millimeters per second, there were some vibrations introduced, but they were pretty minimal. We ramped it up to 400 millimeters per second. 
and then we were having trouble printing with the standard PLA. It was a rough and noisy run, and there were lots of tiny vibrations that became visible in our sample print. When we repeated the test with Hyper PLA at 400 millimeters per second, the results were about the same, even though the infill test turned out well. So now, what about the final test, the printer on printer test? Better, worse, or the same? Well, it's definitely not better, but it's also not worse than the previous test. So if you plan on working next to your printers while they're printing, you need to be careful. And if you're printing at high speed, you can also have these issues show up in your pet G prints. These vibrations are actually pretty small though. They're not likely to be a big problem if you're printing with matte or sparkle type filament. But if you're printing with PET-G, the vibration feet are always an option as well. I hope you found this video helpful. If you haven't already subscribed, please make sure to sub and hit that notification bell as well. Let me know what you think. And if you have ideas for other videos, it might just become a video as well. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.